Good morning guys, it is Fancy Friday and today you and I are going to talk about the steps that you need to take in order to be a full stack developer or rather the way that I think that you should achieve this goal of learning the full stack of web development. Not necessarily web development but the full stack. So let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is to define what is a full stack developer. And my favorite definition is something I'm going to borrow from my old colleague, Mark. A full stack developer is a developer who can fuck up code at all levels of the application. I love that definition. It is absolutely amazing. In a more sane definition, that basically means that you have these skills that are required in order to work on the server, the front end, and also run the application itself. In other words, the DevOps part of running of having a system running virtually. So how do you achieve this goal? Well, the way that I think about it is that when you start out, there is, in my opinion, a very natural step system to actually doing this. And this is the way that I personally achieved this goal of becoming a full stack developer. So I'll share these steps with you. Now, the first thing in any, let's talk about just a web application, but I would say that this is true for almost for every single server based system where you have a client facing interface, like something to a browser or to a mobile app or even a desktop in some cases. But the na natural steps that occur, I think we, I hope this will make sense when I walk you through it. So the first thing I urge you to learn in order to become a full stack developer is that you need to start at the server. The server is where all things happen. In other words, you need to know how the server works. So let's say that you decided to, you want to be a JavaScript guy or girl. You want to start doing JavaScript and full stack JavaScript development. It would be, a, in my opinion, a very natural stopping first stop for somebody who doesn't know any type of programming. So let's start with the server. The first thing you would learn then is to learn Node.js and some type of web framework like Express, for example. And the first goal for you as a soon to be full stack developer is to understand how routing works. In other words, how do requests that come from the browser come to your server? And how does the stuff that is on your server come to the client? In other words, to the user? How does that, do that work? Because in order for you to be able to show, say, a web page to somebody, you need to understand how web pages work and how things are actually coming from the server to the user. So that's the first step. The second step is then to figure out, all right, how do I actually show something to the user? And this is where the client facing thing comes in. In other words, the front end, as we call it, starts being relevant. So the next step after you know how to actually send HTML and JSON and all the ty this type of content to the user, it is th then the next step becomes, all right, how do I make the interface pretty? Think of that as the next goal. So then you start looking into HTML, CSS, and you know, since you're already learning JavaScript, JavaScript as well, because you remember, JavaScript runs on the, on the brow in the browser, and it runs through Node.js on the server if you wanted to. So that's the next step. Once the server is finished, you know how the server works, you start learning the interface part. So you know, you learn things such as HTML, CSS, and so forth, so that you can put up some type of content to the user. Then the next stop comes, and that is that you start realizing, oh, now I can serve up static content, with this per which is perfect for a blog or something like that, where I already pre-program everything. I already write all the files and all the static stuff is already there, already there. But maybe I want to be able to store information. Let's say that I wanted to have a application such as a forum, maybe, or something like that, or a newsletter where people can subscribe to my content. Well, then I need some way of saving all that information. And with the information you have right now, the steps you have taken so far, you're on your way to get there, but you're not all the way there. So the next natural stopping point for you becomes to learn a database, basically. And this is 
this is up for discussion because in theory you could skip this step and learn the next thing but i think that this at least for me this is a very natural next step in your personal development so once you know the server and then the front end you start thinking about learning the database so you can store information those are the three first steps now the next step in this is to learn how to actually run the application and basically that is something of the sort of DevOps. Now I would say as a first step to learning how to actually run an application like this you should have a look at deploying your application to something like Heroku or OpenShift or any of the cloud providers, the more simple cloud providers and they have free tier boxes as well which means that you can actually set up your own web page or web server without any cost to yourself and play around with it. So that's a very good next step to have, have a look at. And then finally comes the more technical stuff that I personally think that is required in order to truly be able to build almost anything. Because as you imagine now that you, through these steps you have learned how to build a static web experience. In other words, the user has no way of sending information or anything like that. You have pre-programmed everything and that is perfect for your own personal blog or something like that where you are the only person updating the content on the application. And now you, with the databases you now know how to create content that any user can actually interact with. But there is one more step to this which is or rather, I would say there, there might be two steps. And the next steps are to figure out, okay, how do I validate a user? Because let's say that you want to let the user have a user account. Now, in order for the user to be able to have a user account, you need a server, some type of interface that the user can interact with, like a login or a registration form or something like that. But you also, and you need a way to store the information that the user is sending to you and then finally after you have all of these things you need to know how to store passwords and create what we call a session so that you can check that the person who is logging in is actually allowed to look at different content because let's imagine that two users log into your system at the same time then you need to know how to separate them in the in, on the server so that user A can't edit the stuff that is the property or the content that belongs to user B and vice versa. So learning how to log in a user and validate that a user is logged in because maybe some web pages they shouldn't be able to see if they haven't logged in. That's also in my opinion also a very natural next step. And then the final step I would say which is this is fairly optional but I think that I know that I personally thought that this was very important and it is, depending on what you want to be able to build, it is fairly po important. And that is to, how, to learn how to upload content, basically things such as files or images, and how to store that in an effective manner. And that touches a little bit on the server and a little bit on the cloud hoster, hosting services that are out there. So that you, you kind of have this step in order to figure out, all right, now I have everything up until logging in, so then the user can log in, but what if the user wants to upload their own profile photo for their profile, for example? Or maybe you have a, something like YouTube, for example, where you can upload videos and store those videos. Then you see that that's kind of, it's almost the last step in all of this, because now you can learn how to store files virtually. And with things such as this, when you know how the server works, you know how the front end works, you know how to run the application in the cloud so with so that it is available to the users or the, the people on the internet and then you learn how to log people in and then finally you learn how to actually upload files. Then you have the, the, the knowledge to create almost any sort of user facing application. This, the, these steps cover almost every single use case for every single application out there. If you think about it, almost every uh, Facebook, Google, all of them have to, uh, this sort of project structure or, or application structure. So this, these steps will be very useful for you to figure out like the bare bone basics of learning how to be a full stack developer. I ho hope that this has been useful to you. Have a great day.